Hello, Super Toe fans, and welcome to my first ever top seven list, ranking one of my favorite things about riding the subway and local rails, the artwork in the stations. As you know, there are a lot of various art installations around New York City transit system, but my favorite installations by far are the amazing, gorgeous, and I can only assume time-consuming to create ceramic and glass mosaic installations. I mean, people walk right by them every day without even paying much attention. So I decided to list my top seven favorites to explore in more detail and give them the attention they deserve. So without further ado, number seven, the home of the stars, Yankees East 153rd Street, the Metro North Station. This installation was created by the artist Ellen Harvey in 2009, and it's the concept behind the work that really makes this one shine for me. Not only is it pretty huge, uh, you know, it takes up pretty much the whole overpass in which it's installed, but this one is made for people to walk by it rather than just stop and appreciate it. I mean, starting from one end, as people pass, the 11 mosaic panels change to symbolize the passing day, starting at 6.30 a.m. and ending at 9 p.m. It's based on a series of photos and watercolors of the south-facing Bronx sky in April, and it is spectacular. Starting with beautiful blues and whites of a cloud-filled sky, and ending with a dark night sky filled with iridescent tiles for stars. Here in New York, we don't really get to see the stars. Well, this doesn't make up for it. Nothing can replace staring at the star-filled sky. Go camping on a clear night and take it in. But it certainly does bring out the beauty of the Bronx that lies beneath those city lights. Also, Yankee Stadium is the home of the stars, isn't it? Number six, passing through 53rd Street, Lexington Avenue. Abstract painter Al Held created this one in 2004, and unfortunately, he didn't live to see its completed installation. I can't quite place why I like this one so much. I'm not a big fan of abstract, so I'm kind of surprised this one's on my list, and you might be too, but the geometric flow of it as you walk by, coupled with the complementary colors popping out, it really comes alive and feels like a playground, almost, you know? Seemingly random geometric shapes fit on top and around and within one another in a weird accuracy I find visually appealing. Maybe it's kind of like New York City, but the city is really just a bunch of boxes stacked on each other with everybody trying to live in a higher and higher box until they will end up like Al Held. But okay, that's depressing. But this Al Held mosaic isn't. And I like that about it. It just feels good and that's important. Number five, Oculus, Chamber Street and Park Place. This is not the Oculus at One World Trade, which itself is pretty amazing, but this was here first. Installed in 1998 by Andrew Genzel and Kristen Jones, I only just discovered it last year, but apparently it's been here since before 9-11 and survived mostly untouched. That makes this one the oldest installation on this list. I usually like localized mosaics that I can take in all in one place, but this is a multi-part installation. Mosaic eyes are installed subtly all throughout the stations and passageways. I always found that a little creepy until I learned they were actually part of the whole piece that culminates in a dedicated installation here on the floor of the upper mezzanine. You can see all the world here, and it radiates outward from a central eye. The, the master eye, I guess? So the reason I like this one isn't because of what it is. As the artists describe it, Oculus was created to personalize and integrate the stations. Eyes are both subtle and strong. They engage passing individuals, allowing for meditation or inviting dialogue. That's not what it does for me. To me, the eyes make it feel like commentary on modern day New York City with CCTV cameras around every corner. Bit creepy. But factor in 9-11, which the artist obviously never considered. And to me, now, it speaks to the resilience of the most diverse city in the world. The eyes are varied in color and shape, and they aren't going anywhere. New York is the center where all the people of the world can interact, and hate isn't gonna change that. And that's why I like Oculus. Number four, losing my marbles. 42nd Street Port Authority Bus Terminal. 
You know, the artist Lisa Denhofer didn't have to make this installation so intricate and detailed. They're marbles. And while I've always thought marbles were pretty, they're not this pretty. This is just, I mean, beautiful. It's, it, I feel like I'm in a game of marbles. Side note, super unfun game. Marbles. Like, why? If, whatever. Back to the awesome mosaic installation. Miss Denhofer, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, states, Every object I paint actually exists. I work from life. The space I create is believable, but not real. Because I design my own space, I call myself an illusionist painter rather than a realist. The space in my work is invented. It's flattened, like the space we see on a television or a computer screen. So she speaks a lot about the space of her work. And that's what I like about this. The marbles are in space. And that space has a pretty gold border, but the marbles refuse to stay in just that space. They're breaking free. From a distance, the installation really stands out and catches my eye, and it's even better on closer inspection. Inside each marble, what seems like a sparkling universe of glass tile. I mean, so much work to bring this one to life. Bravo. Number three, roaming underfoot. 28th Street, the six train station. This glass mosaic by Nancy Blum caught my eye recently and I wondered why I hadn't noticed it years ago. Well, it's because it was only just installed last year in 2019. Apparently this 28th Street station underwent a six month refurbishment and this was part of it and I'm so glad it was. It looks like the flowers took root in the subway and keep growing into the street. The flowers themselves are wonderfully detailed, as are the teeny, tiny tiles that make up the background. Just think, somebody had to go through and glue each of these tiles to the wall. Look at how many there are! Apparently, there are a total of seven flowering plants represented through the station, but I quite favor the central piece. Miss Blum intended to bring a bit of magic of New York City parks into the subway, and I think she was successful. Don't you? Number two, Shed Crossing Delancey Orchard. This one's at Delancey Street, Essex Street. When I first saw this installation, I think it was the red that caught my eye. You can visit one of New York City's giant parks and walk through forests and grassy fields, but I don't think there are any orchards in the city, right? I haven't seen one apple tree or even a fruit tree of any kind for that matter. So this one made me stop and appreciate what New York City was maybe 300 years ago. You know, before it was the New York City we know. At least that's what this installation based on watercolors by Ming Fei makes me think about. It's inspired by the prominent Delancey family's 18th century farm that stretched all the way from the East River to the Hudson River. But apparently those red tiles that caught my eye aren't apples, they're cherries. Apparently there was a big cherry orchard, and that's what this particular one part symbolizes. Whatever, it's really nice to encounter this particular part of the installation. I'll have to check out other parts of it when I have more time. Finding nature underground is always a pleasant surprise for me. And speaking of nature, that brings us to number one, Under Bryant Park, Fifth Avenue. This installation is massive. I think it's one of the biggest mosaic installations in the entire system, but anyway, this quarter is always busy, so stop and appreciate it at your own peril. But for me, the execution of the concept for Under Bryant Park by Sam Kuntz really just works for me. In Ms. Kuntz's words, people travel the subway system, water, and other utility services are delivered by pipes and plants and trees that provide grace and softness against the city's sharper edges find their way to water and nutrients underground through a system of roots. In a similar way, literature is shared by systems of learning and lending, and many animals inhabit systems of burrows, just as humans systematically divide portions of larger habitats above ground. And this statement feels right to me. Systems, the key word here, Subway system, water system, root system, school system, nothing stands on its own. Everything that survives in this world and in this city survives because it is built upon a system. And all those systems are connected, whether you want to recognize that or not. And that is why this installation is at the top for me. It brings literally everything together at the roots and shows how all systems challenge one another 
But if one system fails, the others are not strengthened for it. They are weakened. This quote by Carl Jung is a good one to leave with. He writes, Nature must not win the game, but she cannot lose. Take care of our world, peeps, and our city. And on that note, those were my top seven favorite mosaic art installations. If you think I left one off the list that totally should have been on there, leave a note in the comments and tell me about it. Also, what top seven should I do for my next list? Be creative, let me know what you want to see. Until then, I'll see you in the comments. I don't like, I'll have to think of a different sign off. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>